Hey guys, TJ here with Kayak USA with another DIY video. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to hook your camera up to the back of your kayak and plug it into a USB port for all day recording power. Check it out. is I have to bring handfuls of these batteries for my action cameras and it really doesn't matter which action camera you're using they're gonna go through batteries pretty quick a lot of people are making mods and they're 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 using these external battery packs to plug up their camera for you know mostly all-day power uh, some of the battery packs are big enough you can get all-day power but I'm gonna change it up a little bit in this video uh, I've decided I'm going to put an actual waterproof marine USB port at the base where my camera pole is going to be and I'm going to be able to plug my camera directly into my kayak for all day filming. Now you should be able to use this setup with any of your, any action camera whether you've got a GoPro or an Olympus or any of the uh, aftermarket or, or any other any action camera that you have this should work well for. Uh, I've never done this before so we're going to be doing this together on my kayak in this video so I really hope it turns out good. Uh, but my plan is, is I, I've got all the stuff ordered and I'm fixing to show you everything I bought. And we're going to be setting up my camera on the end of this Targus monopod. Now this is something that's already all over YouTube for, or, for setting your camera up on and people are using it. It's uh, something that you can get at Walmart. It's very cheap. I think it's like $15. I'll definitely be putting a link to everything that I use in today's video in the description. Before we get started, I just would like to say, if you're new to my channel and you like what you see today, make sure you give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and go check out the rest of my video. Once you subscribe, you become a part of the Yak Squad, it's what I like to call my followers, and I do a lot of adventure videos, DIY videos, and just some, and just some fun fishing videos. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell next to it, that way you'll get notified whenever I go live or I shoot a, upload a new video. So let's get right into the build. So the, the plan for today's video is I want to put a Scotty locking mount system back here on the back side of my kayak and I want to be able to use this monopod to mount my camera. This way we can extend it up as far as we want and we can bring it down as far as we want. But I went with the Scotty locking mount because I want to be able to rotate my camera around to get different angles when I'm fishing or I'm on an adventure and I don't want to worry about having to pull it up and move it and push it back down because every time you pull it up you risk dropping everything into the water and nobody wants to do that. So my plan is that we're going to mount this right here in the locking one and I'm going to set it so we can just freely rotate this around. And a lot of guys are doing the all day power and, and it, it's a big thing right now I'm seeing on YouTube. You know this, this monopod is, is nothing new. You can get on YouTube and look this up and, and there's hundreds if not thousands of videos on how to convert this into a go pole you know for your GoPro camera or any any action camera really but the plan for my video is that I want to be it I want to do it a little bit different I want to make this I want to make this so I don't have to zip tie a battery pack to my to my monopod I want to be able to plug my camera directly into my kayak and run it off my main battery which I installed uh, I've actually made a video of me putting the battery system on my kayak. Make sure you check it out. Uh, but I want to be able to just plug my camera directly to my kayak and just record all day long if I, if I want to. So the plan is, is we're going to put this Scotty mount here. We're going to put a USB port somewhere in this boat. And hopefully by the end of this video, I have all day power for my action camera on the back of my kayak. So I'm going to take you guys over to the bench and I'm going to show you everything that I ordered to make this build happen. Let's go to the bench. This is everything that I ordered for this build and I'm hoping I didn't forget anything. If so, we're gonna find out together in the making of this video. But you'll be able to see my thought process as we go through this and then we're just gonna start assembling it and drilling big holes in the boat. So, what you're gonna need is a locking flush deck mounting bracket. It's from Scotty. And the reason you want the locking one, and you can tell when they're locking, they'll have this little line here in them. 
Uh, the reason you want the locking one is, is because once we get this in there, we're not going to want any chances of the pole coming out by itself or, or you know, if you go up under a low hanging branch on a creek, it'll just snatch it right up. So we're going to go with that. Uh, we had to get two of the Scotty rod holder replacement posts. Uh, one of these is going to go into the bottom of our monopod and the other one is going to be used to go into the actual locking deck mount. Uh, you don't have to have this, but I wanted it for security reasons. Uh, I, I, once I drill holes in my boat, I don't trust just putting screws directly in it. So Scotty makes this really cool backing plate. Uh, it's for mounting these into the boat, so you'll just drill your holes all the way through, and they, they come with these stainless steel uh, nuts and bolts, locking nuts and bolts, so once we tighten everything down, we should be good to go. I ordered these two and a quarter inch replacement knobs and I ordered these because I thought that I may need them and we might not end up having to use these because these slip discs that you will need for the project it, I didn't know it but it came with its own its own knob so maybe this will work out really good we'll see maybe I'll end up needing this one maybe not I also ordered this waterproof I say it's waterproof. It's got a cover that plugs into it that makes it waterproof, but it's, it's, it's made for boats. Uh, it's a double USB port, and it's a lot like the one that I installed on my kayak already. It's just, it's not going to be in this big plate. It's, it's going to be, and I think it's got its own little reader on the middle. Yeah, it's got a little digital meter in the middle, uh, but it's about the size of this here, and it's going to go, hopefully we're going to be able to find a place for this to go on the back of the kayak. So you're going to need the USB port, this, let me see if I can open it up. I haven't even opened this stuff yet. This is a six and a half foot USB type C cable. And if you're doing a GoPro 5, this is the cable that you're going to want. And it, like I said earlier, everything will be linked in the description of this video. But I ordered this because this is what's going to run from the camera all the way down the, the uh, pole to the USB port that we're going to be putting on back of the boat. So I got six and a half foot. The monopod is only goes up to five foot. I doubt I'll be going that far anyway. So we're going to have a little bit extra to play with at the end, I hope. Um, something else that I did order is I ordered a 128 gigabyte micro SD for the camera because I found out if you watch the family trip that I just uploaded last week, I filled up two of the 32 gigabyte cards during that and I didn't feel like I got much filmed at all. This is some of the things that I already had here at the house that I'm going to use. I've got these extension, the two poles that I used. It's the same ones that we used in the battery box video. Uh, this is what is going to be used to connect our USB ports to the onboard battery that I have in my kayak. We're going to cut it in the middle here and we're going to use one end of this and I've already got this wire here. This is just some 14 gauge wire. I've got black and red. It should do, it should be more than big enough to do what we're going to do. Uh, then you're just going to need some butt connectors. I had these already at the house. They're heat shrink. So once I clamp them together, I should be able to heat up the ends and make this a, a good waterproof seal. And last but not least, I had this in my drawer, so I didn't have to order one. Uh, I'll see if I can find one and put a link to it. But this is just an inline fuse. Uh, it probably come off one of my old boat projects that I've done years ago, but I found it in my toolbox, so I didn't order a new one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this inline fuse directly off the red wire or the hot wire that's running to my battery. So if anything does happen ever, like if I have a, if, it, if I get in a rainstorm or something and water gets into this, it's not going to short out everything on my boat uh, that's plugged up to the battery. It'll just pop the little fuse that I put in here and I'll be able to save everything else on the boat. So make sure if you're doing this, get you an inline fuse. There's, there's different varieties of these out there. Just make sure you get you one that's got a little waterproof seal. Uh, these, these I really like. You can put them on just about anything and water is not going to get in there. Dust is not going to get on there. It's a, it's a, good, it's a good thing to have. And remember, this video is not going to be just for the GoPros. Like, uh, you, can, you can do this with any GoPro, uh, but you can also do it with other action cameras. You just got to realize that once you do this, like even with this GoPro 5 that I'm going to be using, yes, it's a waterproof camera, but in order for me to do this, I'm going to have to take off this side door. And once you take this side door off, it's no longer a waterproof. Now, it's still, it's still going to be good as long as you don't get rain or you don't dunk the camera. 
but this that door is still going to be removed so that we can plug a wire into it and run it down to the USB port so just keep in mind that just because we're putting this on the back of your kayak does not mean it's going to be waterproof I brought this over for an example if you don't want to put a USB port in your boat this is what a lot of guys are using at the end of their pole uh, what you do is you just take a battery bank like this one I got it off Amazon a couple years ago it's it's a really good one but there's there's tons of them out there you just check the reviews on what you're gonna get uh, but a lot of guys just zip tie this to the base of the pole and instead of plugging up to their boat they just plug into this for all-day power uh, I'm sure if you get one big enough yet yeah, you might have all-day power but I'm just gonna go that extra mile and we're gonna have a dedicated plug just for the back of the boat for our camera so now there's nothing left to do except for get back to the kayak and start drilling holes. Let's do it. All right, so the first thing we got to do is we got to figure out exactly where we want to put our Scotty locking mount at. Uh, you want to get it to a good spot where you can reach back and, and get to your camera with no issues. And, and you also want to mount it somewhere where nothing is going to be in the way. Uh, I originally wanted to mount it up here behind my seat, but I noticed that the, the width of the mount is actually going to hang over a little bit. And I like to keep my paddle on the side in the little paddle holder and I don't want to drill a hole here and then mount this and find out later that it's going to be in the way for other things that I like to use on my kayak. So what I decided to do is I'm going to put it right back here on this flat spot and it should it should be out of the way for anything that I, I don't have anything that really goes here. I should still be able to access everything that I need on the back of the kayak. So I'm going to take a sharpie. I'm going to get this about where I want it. I'm gonna outline this circle, and I got this bit. Uh, we're gonna have to drill an inch and a half size diameter hole in my kayak. Uh, and the reason you have to do that on these Scotty locking mounts is because the actual locking mechanism goes down inside the, the inch and a half diameter hole, and when you lock it, it it's gotta be able to function. If you drill the hole too small or too big, uh, the locking me mechanism might not work. So I'm going to be really careful to make sure that I drill the hole right the first time. You can take more plastic off, but you can't put more plastic back on. Alright, so that is where I'll be putting the hole, and that is where my Scotty mount is going to be. I always hate this part of these kayak DIY projects. Let's, let's go. And there it is. It cut a pretty good circle. That's not going to be too bad right there. I got the lock, lock up front so I'll be able to reach it. Uh, I don't think I want to put it on the back because I have to reach around the pole to get to it. So we'll just put, it seems to work really well. So now I'm just going to make sure everything is kind of square. I'm going to mark and I'm going to drill the mounting holes. This is what we got. Remember, I got the backing plate. The backing plate, and what's good about this vibe is I should be able to take this hatch, pull my bag out, and get to the backing. Oh yeah, see, I'll be able to get to my backing plate really easy from the inside of my kayak. So once I drill these holes, I'm gonna drop these screws through, and I should be able to just slide this backing plate up against it and use a drill and just snug all four down. You know, I'll rotate and do it right. Uh, let's see what says. Drill size required is a 9 30 seconds drill bit. So I'm going to grab that drill bit and we're going to pop some more holes in my kayak. All right, now that the holes are drilled, we're gonna drop the Scotty mount back in position. We're gonna drop our stainless steel screws or bolts, whatever you wanna call them. I'm gonna drop them into their hole. Now I'm gonna take and put the backing plate on the back and I'm gonna slowly tighten each one of these in. You don't wanna cross thread one of these, so once I slide this on there, I'm just gonna, it'll, it'll probably push these bolts up a little bit and I'm just gonna get them started with a screwdriver on each one. 
and then I'll use a drill to, to snug each one down and we'll be done mounting the Scotty mount. All right, now that the first step is done, we're gonna switch over to the next step, which is converting this monopod with a Scotty adapter to make sure that it'll fit down into the back of this. So let's move back to the bench and I'll show you guys how I'm gonna do that. All right, so now that we've got the Scotty mount in place on the kayak, we're going to move on to the Targus monopod build. Uh, this is just the $15 one, I believe, at Walmart. I've already, I bought it a few weeks ago and I've already put the Ram ball on the end, which is really, is, there's nothing to it. You really didn't miss anything. Uh, when you buy this, it comes with a little point on the end of it. Uh, and it's got this little rubber, rubber thing on the end. If you unscrew this rubber thing just a little bit and pull hard enough, you can pull the little spike that's in there. Uh, this was originally meant to be the bottom and it had the spike on it or you could stick it in the ground and, and have a steady spot to hold a camera for taking videos or good pictures. We're going to flip it and we're not going to use it that way. Uh, I put the ram ball mount on the tip and all I did was when I pulled this out it left a hole in the center. Uh, I just drilled that hole a out a little bit and tapped it and ordered a one inch, one and a half inch ram ball mount and it literally it just screws right into the end of it and that's all you have to do. The part I haven't done yet, and I'm fixing to do it right here with you guys, is I'm going to install this uh, rod holder replacement post by Scotty. And we're gonna take this end out that's got the threaded nut on it that hold, used to hold, used to be for holding camera. We're gonna swap it over and we're gonna stick this on the end of it. Uh, I've seen a lot of guys in videos make this and there's tons of videos on if you just wanna make this pole. Uh, but a lot of videos it shows them just taking and, and hacking the end of this off. I don't think you have to do that. I honestly think that when you slide this little grip down, there's three screws. And I'm pretty sure that if we just take those three screws out, the end piece should just come right off. There's one. There's two. There's three. Just like that. There's no need to hack the end of this thing off. You take the three screws out and then you take this little piece off. But now here's where we've got to make this fit the end of this. And when you do it, it's only going to go about right there. So now I'm just going to take a mallet and tap this into place. Just like that. It's almost like this was meant for this. I mean, it, it flushes up perfectly. Uh, I'm not going to trust that that's in there really good like that. I, I'm going to put screws back into this all the way around and, the, and I'm going to use these existing three holes that we just took the little ones out of. I'm not going to use these that we just took out because they're a little bit too small and I'm not going to trust it with my camera. But what I am going to do is I'm going to pick up, I've got a junk drawer full of uh, random size screws and I'm just going to dig in there real quick and see if we have three that are a little bit longer than this and that we can just screw directly into this all the way around. So now that I've got it screwed on really good, I know it's not going anywhere, I'm just gonna slide that grip back down. Look at that, it looks like it was made to be like that. So the next step is, is we're gonna put our other Scotty Rod Holder Replacement Post, is what this is called. I keep forgetting the name of these. But like I said in the beginning of this video, I'm going to link everything in the description of this video that I used today. I'm gonna to try to remember everything and put it in the description. That way you can go straight to it on Amazon or, or wherever. Uh, all of this stuff from Scott is from Scotty, but I actually ordered it off of Amazon. I don't know if it came from Scotty through Amazon or what, but I just found, you know, I found everything I needed there. So here's where we're at now. We got two of these, and if I was to just put these on here like this, it would be fine and dandy, except for I wouldn't be able to, the only way to adjust the height in, of my camera, I would have to literally turn the knob and back this all the way out and then move it to the next spot. And as you can see, the teeth on here, uh, there's a lot of teeth, so there's a lot of different spots, but if you really want to dial it in and get a perfect spot and have a smooth turn while you're videoing, uh, you don't want to have to reach back there and turn the knob and do all that. So what you order to fix that is you order these Scotty slip discs. So, what we're gonna do is first, the end of each of these have nuts in them. We don't need a nut on each end, so we're gonna knock the nut out of one of these. And I, I don't think it really matters uh, 
which one we knock the nut out of. I'm gonna knock the nut out of the actual camera, the one on the camera pole. Right, so now we're gonna take the slip disc out. So once you get both slip discs on each side, you're gonna have something that looks like this right here. Let me see if you can see it really good. See, I've got one on each side and they're gonna go together and create it so that we can move the camera smoothly without having to pull it out and go through teeth. And uh, now I'm glad I did order the wing nuts because I, I ordered these because I didn't know one was gonna come with these slip discs. But I'm glad I did because these don't have a hole all the way through it. If you notice, this one that come with the slip, the, uh, slip disc, it, it's a bolt that comes with the knob and you drop this through there. Well, you can't really use that because once you stick this in, you've got to make sure that this is pulled up the whole time you're trying to adjust it. It don't just lock in there. So the whole time you're spinning this, it's not going to be spinning that nut and it's going to be a pain in the butt. So I'm going to open these, go straight through one side to the other. And you just, just like that and see how I can just, and see, and if you tighten it up a little bit, it snugs it into place and it keeps it locked in. You loosen it just a little bit and if you get the sweet spot, it'll lock itself and you can still reach back and move it to any position you want to move it to. Now let's go back to the kayak and drop this into place. All right, so now that we've got our monopod completely set up, we've got our Scotty mount on the bottom. We've got our round ball on the top. It still will be telescopic and it'll go up to about five foot, I think uh, is what they'll go up to. We can come over here and install it on the back of the kayak. If you turn this knob just a little bit, we can adjust this now any way we want because of the help of the slip disc. It, it's not a pull and move around type thing. And then you just lock it down to the angle you want and it holds it really good. If you flip the lock, this thing will not come out. It locks this whole mount into position. But the thing about these Scotty mounts are they have the teeth on them. Uh, and the teeth, this, this has teeth and then this has teeth and when you drop it in, you still have to pull up and turn and drop it back into place in order for this thing to lock into position and for me to be able to uh, move it around. If I use the Scotty mount the way it's supposed to be and I lock it into position, I can't pivot it around like I really want to do. I want to be able to reach back and pivot this thing around for different angle shots for, uh, for my videos. So what I'm going to do I'm going to modify the end of this a little bit. Uh, I'm going to take my Dremel and I'm going to take off all of these teeth and it's going to make it completely smooth all the way around. And when I do that, we should still be able to drop it in here with no problem and lock it. And it's going to continue to hold it in no matter what, but it's going to give me the ability to swing it around. Now, one of the problems I may run into when I do this is once I take all of these little teeth off and I smooth this down, it may want to spin too much on me. It, it may want to, it may want to just drop in here and just spin just like this. That's not what I want to be able to do. If it's, if it does that, when I get there, I'm going to take black electrical tape and build it up a little bit, uh, so that it's a tighter fit, but I'll still be able to reach behind me and spin it without having to pull up and unlock it and all of that. So now I'm going to go back to the bench. I'm going to grab the Dremel and we're going to take these teeth off. Okay, so the plan is, is these teeth right here that lock into position whenever we put this mount on the boat, uh, we, we don't want them there. We want to get rid of them. So I've got a Dremel. If you don't have a Dremel, you could probably use a, a, a really sharp box cutter. Just be really careful doing it. But I'm going to take the Dremel and I'm just going to try to erase all of these teeth. So I got all the teeth off of it. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but I think once we uh, get back over to the kayak and drop this in, we can add some electrical tape to it and give it that snug but smooth flow that we're wanting to be able to pivot this all the way around the boat. All right, so now you can see that when I drop it in the boat, it spins really free. And uh, that's, what we're, that's not what we're looking for. So I'm gonna add some electrical tape. Like I said a while ago, we're just gonna wrap the base where the teeth were, just a couple of wraps. It's not gonna take much. All we're wanting to do is make it a little bit wider to create more friction so it's not such a smooth turn. We still want it to fit down in here good though. Let's see. 
That might be too much. Let's take a let's take a half a wrap off or a wrap off. Let's see. Get it all the way down. Make sure it's locked. And it's not going to come out. Now that's much that's that's much better there. So. I added that little bit of tape to it and it gave me just a little bit more friction so this is not just going to swing around on its own. I should be able to now just reach behind me and turn this where I want it and it'll stay right there. Uh, what you don't want is it to be so freely that like, like when you, you're trying to film over there and you think you're filming but your camera has spun by itself. So I think I've got a pretty good bit of friction here. Alright so now that we have our mount exactly how we want it and it's doing everything we want it to do, I'm going to show you how I attach my camera to the end of this Ramball mount. And it's really simple, it's all over YouTube. Uh, you can just look it up, but um, I'm using just this little, I think it's, uh, it's a joint, like a joint connector. Uh, it's made by RAM. All it does is connect a one and a half inch RAM ball to another one and a half inch RAM ball. It's just a little uh, joint connector. On this end, I've got a one and a half inch RAM ball with the GoPro adapter uh, just screwed to the end of it. And what you do is, this is how I connect it. There's other ways you can connect your camera to the end, just depending on what camera you got. I like this because it gives me that little bit of extra uh, adjustment, you know, if I want to dial in and have it a certain way off the side of my kayak. So now we have the camera mounted up there and I can just reach out, I can pull it, push this as far as I want out, I can bring it in, I can reach beside me if I want to do a side shot, I can slide this thing all the way over and get any angle I want and I don't have any fear of this coming out, like I said, because I went with the locking Scotty mount. And that's what you want to remember to get. If you, desi if you decide to do this, just go ahead and get the locking one. Uh, the, I'm putting links to all of this in the description. I've said it several times. Uh, get the locking one. You don't want to get the one that don't lock and reach back here to adjust while you're fighting a fish to get that good angle. Uh, and you reach back there and you knock your camera out of the, out of the mount into the water. Uh, I'm not saying they would fall out, but it could happen, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna trust it with a with a camera on the end. You guys know how much these GoPros are. I just bought this one. I'm definitely not gonna risk throwing it in the water. Now our next step is is to we're gonna I'm gonna plug the cord into this, and we're gonna see how far I can actually go out because I don't want to go ahead and drill and mount my USB, you know, somewhere and then find out that my cable is not gonna reach or I'm not gonna be able to pivot. Uh, I want to make sure that I can use my to my fullest extent with this thing before I drill a hole and mount the USB port because it might be just out of reach for the cable. Uh, they do make longer than six and a half foot cables, but the six and a half foot is what I got. So I want to be very careful uh, where I put this USB port. So this thing is like five foot up and I don't think that I'm gonna have any problem having the extra slack to really put this USB port anywhere. So after going back and forth in my mind about exactly where I wanted to put this USB port, I decided I'm not gonna do it face up. I can't do it on this back storage area where my, my tackle box and coolers and stuff go because I don't want a USB plug poking out and risk getting it broken off. Uh, what I did decide on is up under my seat, I have a flat wall. So you can't really put anything on this top wall because the seat pole goes right here. Uh, but this bottom little step right here, it, it's got a flat enough spot where the wires, uh, this, will, this should actually be able to go flush against the inside and be under the seat on the kayak. And I can just run the wire right through back behind the seat and plug it up. I took off the little waterproof, uh, the little plugs that plug into the, that plug directly into the USB port. Uh, and this, this diameter is the exact size we need. So I just held it up where I want to put the USB port and I traced my circle. Uh, what I do have is I have one of these comb bits and I hope this doesn't just rip into my kayak. Uh, I'm going to drill a pilot hole first in the center of my circle and I'm going to slowly try to work this in until I get to the same size circle that I have traced and we should be able to slide this right in. So let's try that. Cutting a perfect circle. We're getting closer to that size we need. I'm not exactly in the center of my trace line though, am I? Alright, so 
now that we have our USB port on the back of our boat, uh, we've got both our front and rear hatch open so we can get to the inside of our boat. All we have to do now is run our uh, black and red wire or, or whatever colors you end up using. Uh, the connector that we're going to be adding on at the end is going to be what plugs into our five-way splitter at the front. Uh, if you don't know what the five-way splitter is, it, 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 it connects multiple things. It has multiple points that these plug into to power different things in my boat. I'm already using two of the splitters out of the five. Uh, one goes to my Lowrance and one goes to my little USB dash point at the front. So I've got three extra ones now and we're fixing to use one of them for this rear USB port. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the wires through and we're going to put this connector on that plugs into our five-way splitter which then plugs into the battery box which I've done a whole video on. If you don't know what it is, make sure you uh, hop on that video after this one and check it out. It's where I build this battery box and I install the dash panel and the five-way splitter. But I've got a little trick in mind for this, uh, for running these wires. It's really complicated to try to feed wires through a long area like this that you can't get to. And before I got into kayaking, I was wiring up bass boats a lot and I had to figure out ways to get wires on the inside of the hole from one end to the other. And what I figured out is, is if you've got some house wire, this is just like really thick copper wire that goes in the walls at your house. Uh, it, it's really stiff and what I can do is I can take my red and black wire that I'm going to run from my USB ports to the front and I can just tape them to the tip of this thick house wire and I can just feed it all the way up to the front and then and do all my hookups. That way I'm not trying to shove my arm all the way up in the hole of the kayak and grab the wires and look for them or try to fish them through any other way. So now I'm just going to take after I tape the tip of this wire to my house wire, my, it's, the, it's the copper house wire, it's very, it's stiff but it's still flexible. I'm going to try to feed it through the front hatch to the opening. Uh, a lot of kayaks do have styrofoam in the way and you got to kind of fish your way around it. I'm hoping I don't have that problem, but we're fixing to find out. And I've got it. Slide this up and y'all can see me. Alright, so the wire come out the other end. So now we have successfully run the wire from the front of the kayak to the back and it didn't take that long at all. So the USB port comes with these, uh, these little blue connectors and all they do is they plug to the back of it. It's just a flat bill, the male and the female. It comes with the two female. You've got the two male sticking off the back. You've got a positive and a negative. And we're just going to splice the end of these two wires and put the connectors on. There's really nothing else to it. So I'm just stripping a little bit off the ends so that we can put our connectors on. Make sure they can seat up in there really good. And use your, uh, just some little crimps. And crimp it right down on there. So once you get the connectors put on your red and black wires, you just wanna make sure that when you plug it up, let me get a flashlight on here. You're just going to look in here to verify which is the positive and which is the negative. And now the USB ports are connected to the wires and the wires are ran up to the front. So now we're going to move to the front and we're going to finish the installation. So now we just shave off the ends of our red and black wire up front. And the first thing we're going to connect is our inline fuse. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hook it to the hot wire, the red wire. And we're going to do that using butt connectors. This really ain't nothing too special. I'm going to crimp one buck connector on the red wire.
So after I get the first butt connector connected on one side, it's just I'm just connecting it to the red wire. I'm going to go ahead and slide a piece of heat shrink. Now you don't have to do this. This is just me uh, being extra cautious. I'm going to slide that heat shrink on there, and then I'm going to go ahead and clamp the other butt connector. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and clamp the other end of this butt connector to one end of the inline fuse. And it really doesn't matter which end of the inline fuse you clamp to. Just make sure you got a good clamp on it. Now I'm going to slide this heat shrink back up and completely cover and center over that, that butt connector. And we're going to heat it up. I'm just going to use a lighter so I don't have to go dig my heat gun out. Alright, so now our hot wire has the inline fuse on it. We're going to go ahead and take and cut our connector cable that we got that's going to be used to connect to our five way splitter. We only need one end of this, so I'm just going to fold it center and I'm going to cut it right in half down the middle. So now I'm going to take my hot wire from my USB port, the one we just put a uh, inline fuse on. This is our hot going to our hot on our USB port. I, I slid me a piece of heat shrink on it and now I'm going to take a butt connector. I'm going to put it, I'm going to go ahead and clamp it on this end where our fuse is. Get it clamped down. And now I'm going to put it to this connector. Okay, this connector is the same one that I just talked about. I'm, I'm trying to stress this that now we are switching it and I am connecting the hot wire to the white because the, it goes to the female which plugs to the male which is red on your battery. That's so confusing. I know I, I'm trying my best to make sure that it's not just crazy confusing but I know how it might sound to some people. Okay, so now we got our connection. See red to white. I'm going to slide our heat shrink over and we're going to go ahead and seal this end up where my lighter go. Now we're going to grab our black wire which is negative to our USB port that's in the back. We're going to go ahead and put our butt connector on, one, on the black. Push it down. Make sure you're all the way in. Clamp just that side of it tight. You don't want to clamp the center because you'll fold too much in on the other end. You're just going to clamp the end that the wire is on. Then you're going to take a piece of heat shrink. You're going to slide it over the connector that's going to plug to your five-way splitter, which then goes to the battery. You're going to slide it on that end. And now we're going to hook the red wire to the connector to the black wire to your USB port. We're going to clamp it down. Now we have our connector connected. And when we plug it into the battery, we should have juice on our rear port. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug this up and we're going to watch that USB port in the back and see if the light kicks on. And I'm going to try to do this holding the camera in one hand and plugging it up with the other. All right, let's see. I'm having a problem getting it. Yep, I see the lights kicked on. It's not plugged all the way in up here because it's hard to do with one hand. But we are, we do have juice, 12.8 volts. Here is our USB cord. This is still plugged up to our GoPro. We are going to go ahead and plug it in, and it should turn the red light on on the GoPro. And there's only two ways to plug up a USB port, and it takes me three tries every time. All right, so we're plugged in to the boat. Let's see if we get a red light. And there's our red light. All right, so now we've got all the wiring done. I've got everything put back where it's supposed to be. I'm gonna get, grab the camera and I'm gonna do a full walkthrough with you guys and let you guys see what it looks like now that we've completed the project. All right, so let's start at the front of the kayak. We've got the battery box stored up here. Let me grab a flashlight so I can show you guys. The battery box is up front here. We've got the five-way splitter. Everything's zip tied up together. The wires run through the kayak. You can see way back there, 
my red and black, they go straight through the center of the kayak and they run all the way back to the USB port. So you can see the battery is hooked up on my dash panel. Uh, it's telling me we have 12.8 volts in the battery up here. My USB ports are lit up. I got the cigarette lighter. If this is one of my first videos that you've watched, make sure you go back and check out my other video of how I installed all of this. Uh, but we'll move on to the back of the kayak. As you can see, I've got the GoPro way up. I've got it extended about four feet high and it's plugged in and it is flashing red. I don't think you can tell from there, but I've got, and I kind of spiraled the, the wire around it so it keeps it from flopping around. And I've got it where it comes right down through here and just right up under my seat. If you take and lift the seat up, you can see that I got power. Let's see. 12.6 volts. I've got the GoPro plugged right into it and it, it looks pretty good up under the seat. I, I gotta admit that it, it's hid really well. Like when my camera is not plugged up, it's not gonna be in the way. It, I think that was a really good spot for me to put it. Now I can put my seat down. I don't have to worry about any water getting into the USB port. Uh, here's a close up of the mount with the lock. I've got it unlocked right now. If we lock it, it's not going to come out. You can't even really see that I've got the, the black tape on there, but it keeps it. And now I should be able to just swing her on around. I get any shot I want, and it's really smooth. I can come all the way back to this side if I want. And there's plenty of the six, this is six and a half foot braided USB-C cable for the GoPro 5. So it's, it's pretty good. I think it's going to be really good. Well guys, that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate you watching. If you like this video, make sure you give me a good thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget, go look at my other videos, check them out, and make sure you hit that subscribe button and become a member of the Yak Squad. If you hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button, you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video or I go live. I appreciate all the support from you guys, and I'll catch you next time.